Hey guys, Mr. Burns here. Um, there's been a lot of requests over the past couple weeks to make some physics videos, so um, I'm here's my shot of making my first physics video. And since our most recent topic, and I hear you guys have complained a lot about it and wanted me to make a video about it, here's my first video on light. So I'm going to take you guys through a conceptual overview and what you sort of need to have a conceptual understanding of to to really really get into um, the important stuff about light. Okay, so in order to know some stuff about light, we kind of need to know how it travels. So how does it travel? Light travels in a straight line, usually. Okay, we, we talked about the special cases, you know, uh, when it bends and things like that. But uh, for the most part, when it's in one medium, uh, it travels in a straight line. And this phenomenon is called uh, rectilinear propagation. Okay, so if you have um, what's called a ray of light and something is blocking that ray of light, it's not going to magically bend around it. It just hits it, and that's it. Okay, that's why you have sometimes, um, you know, uh, an absence of light in some places and things like that. Um, we also talked about some some properties of light. Um, first one mean transmission. Light passes through some materials. As it does, it may slow down, uh, lose uh, lose some energy, heating up the medium, and slow down. Whatever. Um, so. We talked about this in a couple different ways because we talked about how the speed of light differs in certain materials and how it it's it's uh, uh, slower in water than it is in air that kind of thing. Okay. Um, the next thing we talked about was uh, diffraction. Okay. Um, and basically, what that is, as waves pass through a narrow slit, it will bend to fill the space behind it. In order for this to happen. Uh, the slit must be around the same wavelength as the light. So an example of that might be water waves, but I'll show you what happens here. So if I have some light source here, and it's going like that. So as the light source passes through here, what ends up happening is you get this bending of the light. Okay? So it bends around here. And it's a little bit more complicated than I'm making it to be right here, but um, basically what ends up happening is if you have a narrow slit here, then you actually get to see some of the light being uh, lighted up here. You'll see light and dark spots on this here too. And if you had a screen over here, you'd have some constructive and destructive interference on the screen, and you get dark and light spots as well. So basically, what ends up happening is the light just diffracts around around the corner, kind of thing. Okay, so that's important. Uh, there was a video here, and I'll show that now. Uh, the next thing we talked about was reflection. Light will bounce off certain objects if the, if it's smooth enough. Um, specular, specular reflection occurs, and you can see your reflection. So that'd be like, um, you know, you're looking at a pond kind of thing. If the object is rough, uh, a diffuse reflection occurs. So that's like, if you're on a pond in a windy day, you're not going to look down and see your reflection, or you might see something that's kind of all messed up. Okay. Um, what else we got? The law of reflection. Okay, so this is something we talked about here. Uh, the law of reflection states that the angle of incidence must equal the angle of reflection. So here's the incident ray coming in, and here's the reflected ray coming out. Okay, so this is the normal line. These two angles are equal. Um, I really didn't talk a lot about mirrors because it's not a huge topic, but all you really need to know about mirrors is what's stated here. Images in plane mirrors are upright, not upside down, and virtual. They cannot be projected onto a screen, as well as they. Uh, undergo lateral inversion. So light uh, left and right are switched. If you have an object here, call the circle, or dot, that's my mirror. It's exactly the same distance away. So if this is uh, two meters, and this is two meters, and the images are two meter, or four meters apart. Okay, really that's all you need to know. Okay. Um, we talked about the bending of light, refraction, the bending of light as it passes from one optical medium to another. So the example of that is uh, um, a strand of glass. So here you have uh, light ray passing through in the air, and then as it bends here, um, it gets refracted. Okay, so you see that. And theta one right here is greater than theta two. The light must slow down and bend towards a normal line. So you see it's going in this way. Okay. It's going in this way. 
Now, if it's the opposite happens, you have the incident ray coming down. Now, if it's going from H2O to air, so it speeds up, it bends away from the normal line. So you have uh, the incident ray coming in. Here's theta 1. Theta 1 now is less than theta 2. Um, here's the index of refraction. So n is equal to c over b. So the index of refraction is dimensionless, doesn't have any units. C is the speed of light, 3 times 78 meters per second. And v is the speed of light in that medium. So that's one of the things we talked about that you might need to know, a uh, good multiple choice question, that kind of thing. Okay, so really get this straight. So you can sort of, it's just a ratio of the speed of light and the speed of light in that medium. And that's all the index of refraction is. Um, here's some index of refraction. So 1.6. Uh, for quartz, 2.42 for diamond. So higher end values means slower light. And, uh, and you can look at the formula and see that. So the higher end value means slower light. So this means that this is lower because the speed, the speed of light in that object is slower. And this is speed of light in a vacuum, basically. Okay. Uh, here's an example. You guys got that in your notes. Here's another thing we talked about, Snell's Law, N1. Uh, sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2. So that's the incident. This is the refracted. And if n1 is greater than n2, we can find the critical angle. And that's uh, OC, at which total internal reflection occurs. Okay. And that's and when that happens, this is the special case. Okay. So n1 sine theta, uh, theta c is equal to n2 sine of 90. Okay. So in that case, what would end up happening if I go back to my little ray diagram? So we need to have this is basically what happened. It would be coming down here, and then boom. What would happen is it would go right at a 90 degree angle here. So this would be 90. So this is your idea of what a, a critical angle is. Okay. So we're looking at what's the critical angle here? What's theta c or c here that's going to make this happen? Okay. So that would be total internal reflection, okay? That's what a critical angle is. So this now would be OC. So let's go back here for a second. All right, we won't go through any examples here. I don't know if there's much more. Uh, okay, we'll talk about this. Interference of light waves. Like other waves, light waves can interfere with each other. This, can be, uh, this interference can either be constructive, bright lines called maxima, or destructive, uh, dark lines called minimas. Um, in order to get light waves to... Uh, interfere. It is easiest to cause light to diffract through very narrow slits. As long as the size of the slits is close to the size of the light wave width, uh, light wave width, the light will diffract and form an interference pattern. So there's a good diagram on your book to see this, but I think I have one here um, that we did in class. And um, this is sort of a conceptual idea. I think I'll pass on this. Here's what happens. Okay. So you see two sources. Uh, two sources of light here that's diffracting through narrow slits, okay? And here they are. we have the bending of light. So I sh we, saw, we, sh we saw that, sorry, that, that diagram earlier when I had it through one slit, okay? But now there's two slits and there's some um, there's some construction and destructive interference, okay? So you got some bright spots over here, some dark and some light spots, okay? And some dark spots, sorry. Um, and this is called the Thomas Young sketch of the two-slit uh, two diffraction. All right, so that's a kind of an important concept. Um, and here's a formula we used for single slit interference. And um, this gives the location of a minima. So you see this is the formula. Uh, and we, uh, we realize that it's not that different from when we have uh, double slit interference. Okay, um, this is the diagram we need to know. We got a bright spot. So this would be a min. This would be a max here. And this allows us to find... Uh, minimas okay single slits allow us to find minimas and and this distance here we call x and this would be n2 this would be n1 n3 so on and so forth and here's an example we won't go through it and another example uh, double slit interference has this formula this is really the most important part of it and that's what will be given on your formula sheet um, gives a location of the maxima bright lines okay where um, this is the wavelength of light. This is the um, and the location of the maxima. So the first, the second, the third uh, distance between uh, the distance of the slit. So the difference between that one and this one is this right here. This little block, each I'll call it, is D. So when the light's passing through here, you get the constructive interference. That D 
is this right here, okay? And this is what this diagram looks like. So note the difference. These are on maxes. The other ones were on the minimas, okay? And again, N1, N2, N3, so on and so forth. So light spots here, or dark spots here, minima, bright spots, maxima. And that's your D, here's your theta, and that represents your X or your height at that particular um, maxima. So you got these examples in your notes, guys, that we went through. Um, I think I'll stop right there. Um, what I really, really want you to guys to think about is uh, just basically how light travels, okay? If you're thinking about how light travels, that's really what you need to think about, and some of the types of things that go on, refraction, diffraction, um, and reflection, so forth and so on. This wasn't meant to be uh, something that uh, was really, really useful to you guys. I just wanted to bring you back through some of those things, and um, I hope that really straightens things out, okay? All right, guys, thanks very much. I'll be posting some good videos uh, later.